friends, this is Bijou Baker and Maria. Today's dessert is just, it's, I'm actually going to do a sweet and savory. So whether you call it um, parachute, profiteroles, or just cream puff, they're essentially the same thing. Uh, what are they? Sisters from another mister, brother from another mother. <laughs> they're all in the same family. It's a puffed pastry, not puff pastry that's flat and rolled. Uh, this is a ball that's baked. When it's baked, um, the ingredients, the way it's made, gives you a hollow uh, puff to be filled with all sorts of stuff. They're usually eclairs or cream puffs. Um, but you've got such an amazing little shell in whatever size or design you want um, to fill with so many different things. So I'm going to make one recipe and divide it in half and make sweet and savory. That's my thought, but <laughs> I also know I'm probably going to end up just doing two separate because, because they're so good and they freeze perfectly. Uh, in case you didn't know, nine out of the 10 cream puffs that you get in the store have been frozen for a while because they freeze well. So go figure. So if it's good for me, you guys can trust it. <laughs> I don't like stuff that's frozen unless it freezes well. There's a huge difference. So these things, you can make the shells ahead of time, especially if you have a big party coming up. Um, make the shells ahead of time. You can fill them later. Some of the things you can even freeze. Uh, I In the video below, I, I made this amazing vanilla cream. It is just delicious. And I made it two ways. Um, I made it with a little more cornstarch in one so it's firmer. That will go inside the eclair. And then the other one is creamier and light. And that's going to go inside just the smallest um, cream puff bites. They're just like poppables. Um, and that freezes really great. Take it out a couple of hours before, let it come to not room temperature, but at least cool. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's go play. I didn't even show you the list of ingredients. <laughs> what was I thinking? Okay, and this is one of the most basic basic patashu uh, recipes, cream puffs, profiteroles, same thing. It's the easiest recipe and it's, they're all, they're all really easy. Um, and the part that would intimidate you, we're going to knock that out of the park. Um, but it's a very generic recipe across the board. Some may add one or two things different, but not necessary. But I am going to change half of it. I'm going to change some of it to show you the um, savory kind. Oh my gosh, those are so good. All right, so we're just going to put everything in the pot except for the eggs and we're going to bring them to boil. Most of this is done on the stove. Okay, so I've set my oven to 400. It's going to preheat and I'm just going to put in the water, get my pan going in my pot. You don't need a big pot for this. And put in the butter. Butter doesn't have to be room temperature because it's going to melt. And the salt. So we're just going to let this come to a little boil, a little rumble. Okay, the butter's melted and you can see that it's hot, but it's not boiling. I want this to boil just a little bit, not a violent, vigorous boil but I definitely need to see movement. There we go, baby. That's nice. Not ridiculous, just like I say, you just want to see the water moving around. Then you're going to add the flour all at one time. And you're just going to keep steering, steering. <laughs> keep steering this wheel. until you get a ball and it pulls away from the edges. And you want to toast it. You do want to toast it a little bit. I mean, that 
that's always the key otherwise they'll taste like pasty flowers So you're going to see a film cover at the bottom of this pan, uh, pot. So when you get that, then you know it's done. And for those of you who are, are gym heads, <laughs> you do not need to do arm day when you do these. And this, this isn't even the hard part. <laughs> when you add those eggs in, holy macaroni. That is a work out. There's a little bit. This is such an interesting dough. Okay, then you're going to put it into a bowl and let it sit for about, I don't know, maybe 10 to 12 minutes. So I had this in the pot for about three, three solid minutes just mixing it around. That's good. So it's going to sit here and we're going to add the egg. Okay, so we need to cool this off just a little bit. Otherwise, when you do put the eggs in, you're going to get scrambled eggs, not the filling we want for this. So I'm just kind of smushing it around, spreading it out so it can cool. I say that as the steam comes up and smacks me. All right, maybe about six more minutes. While that's cooling, I wanna to talk to you about the tips that I'm gonna use. I know, right, crazy, four whole bags. Um, that's all right. So when they're baking, I'm gonna make up some uh, sweet whipped cream to go inside the delicious cream puff, great big old mound of cream. Mm. So I'm going to use this larger star tip for that. That's a good, um, this tip here says you mean business. You're gonna be putting a lot of um, whatever's inside. And this is a uh, tip 9ST. Now, it doesn't really mean anything, you guys. I mean, because there are different tip makers and they all have different numbers. You just want a large uh, star tip. And then this one I'm going to use to fill the eclairs with. Now you see the difference in the, in the prongs? This is gonna give you a more delicate, a uh, lot more lines and grooves. And this is just like the cream puffs that you see in the stores. So that's what those two are gonna be. And then when it comes time to actually putting the dollops onto the, um, I'm sorry, I moved you onto the cookie sheet. I've got, again, two sizes. This is gonna be for the mini, and I'll save those for later. I'm gonna go ahead and make a whole other batch for those. And then this is just like a, a another large tip. It's about, it's about three quarters of an inch. Eh, no it's not, it's about a half inch. Um, but just whatever size, the bigger the size, the bigger the, the puff, so just keep that in mind. So this is this is ready. You don't want it to come 
completely cool because you want the eggs to combine really well. All right, so warm, not hot, but warm. One egg at a time, I need a bowl. So I'm putting the shells on this just to throw away all together. Now, a lot, when I used to make this, in fact, this is probably the first time I'm not going to mix it by hand. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, uh, it's gonna drain you if you do it by hand, but you can. Um, you can also just put this in a mixer and let the mixer do it. I'm just gonna use a stand mixer, uh, a hand mixer and, and go with that. So one egg at a time. And you definitely don't want to rush this one. So right now that's just a hot mess. It looks just like scrambled. I don't know. Um, but don't worry about it. Believe it or not. When you're done it's going to be really creamy and silky and a really nice batter but you want to incorporate the eggs well most especially here anytime yes but most especially here and anytime i bake i always use the jumbo eggs i just like come on i just like the volume and the extra richness i get So we end up with this nice creamy mixture. I will tell you, I confused my recipes. Five eggs, five eggs, five eggs. It didn't quite look right and I wasn't sure why. And then I remember it's like, no, I usually, it's much creamier this way. And it kind of just ribbons a little bit. It's the weirdest looking texture ever. <laughs> so we're gonna stick this in the bag. and pipe them in. And this, from here on out, it's so easy to work with. Yeah, I think it can all fit in there. It's funny, for as much work as I do in the kitchen for my desserts and my dishes, I'm really quite lazy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I don't wanna do more than I have to. All right. So here's where here's where it's kind of fun. Um, and anytime you pipe something, you wanna make sure to twist off the edge so it doesn't ooze out, and then cut it to a hand length, whatever just fits in your hand, and then twist that as well. I'm gonna twist it as I'm working because you can see it's right there. So the, I'm gonna start with just a few. I'm not gonna make a lot of eclairs. I'm just gonna make a few. And they're not gonna be terribly big either. All right, I know I just said a few, didn't I? <laughs> All right, now the cream puffs, they're gonna be bigger. Nice, good pressure. Swish it off and let it top. 
squeeze, 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 squeeze. Stop squeezing and let it top. These are super fun for Valentine's Day. Because you can, you can put anything in here. You can stick a whole strawberry in there if you want to. I don't have strawberries, otherwise I would show you. All right, I'm gonna make just a few small ones. Usually I use a smaller tip, and these are going to bake a little quicker, dug on it, but I just have the dough. All right, now here's here's a trick that you're gonna you're gonna want to use. So I just took um, a paper towel and wet it, and I'm gonna just dip the tip of it, and then kind of break those little peaks that are on top if there's any. Just the tip. You don't really want to, um, you don't want to wet it because it will, it will show, believe it or not. Weird, huh? Just barely, barely, barely tapping. All right, I think we're good. All right, they go in the oven. Alexa, set the timer for 35 minutes. 35 minutes. If I just set off your girl, sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right, so they're gonna um, they're gonna rise a bit and, and get airy inside and get ready to be filled. So we're gonna make the sweet cream, and I am gonna go ahead and make those savory ones <sighs> because they're so good. the savory exact same steps you just added flavor and I put in um, rosemary cardamom and basil because I'm gonna fill it with a goat cheese and sun-dried tomatoes <clears throat> and then um, drizzle a basil olive oil on top I know I know it's like Oh, good. All right, so they're going to bake. In the meantime, we're going to get the whipped cream. This doesn't happen until those things out of the oven are cool. I mean, like, not even slightly warm. You don't want to ever put whipped cream in anything slightly warm. It's going to immediately melt it. So we're going to let that cool to cool, cool, and then whip this up and fill it and eat it, but mostly eat it. Okay, so now we're going to make the filling for the savory. This you can also do a day ahead of time. Bring it to room temperature, put it in a pastry bag, and pop it in each little yummy hole. Um, 
and this is this huh there's no measuring I'm just making it so follow along and let's just make it this really can't be any easier I just have um how much is this it's just a four ounces four ounces of goat cheese and if you don't like goat cheese use cream cheese if you don't like cream cheese use uh, you could use yogurt I've never <laughs> but you could it's yours so you want to make sure it's oh they're done okay the the looks so fantastic but I'm gonna put them in for another five minutes because I want a little more brown to them okay so getting back to this I'm using a firm you can use a spoon um, I'm just gonna use something firm that I know will separate and smash and cream we must have a visitor all right in this I am gonna add just a pinch of Bijou Sexy Salt. And if you haven't made this stuff yet, you guys, the link is below. It's so good. All right, so in here, I'm going to add just a squeeze of, a good squeeze of the basil paste. It's really weird <laughs> here in, in Arizona. Um, it's hard to get fresh, herbs and, and stuff. It's like, wait a minute. And I, I can't grow them. I've already resigned myself to that. I can kill a silk plant, so I'm not going to try. But man, this smells good. I'm going to put a little bit more. And then I'm just going to chop up some sun-dried tomatoes, the jarred kind. I made some last summer and man, they went so fast. <laughs> I think I'll have to go do that again. All right. Now, if you don't like, if you don't like sun-dried tomatoes, you're obviously not gonna use them. I happen to be a fool for them. So I'm going to use a lot. <laughs> You kind of want to make sure that they're, it's chopped really well because when you squeeze it from the bag, yeah, I need more. I need more. That's just not going to make me happy. And if I have too much, then I'll just either add more um, goat cheese or more basil. So I'm going to make a paste. I'm just going to chop it until there's like a paste. And this oil in there is going to really give it a pretty color and flavor. Okay, I'm just checking for consistency here. Like this big piece, I definitely want to work on that. Okay, that's that's good. And I won't really know how much is good until it's all in and I taste it. Yeah, that is my favorite part of cooking. That looks fantastic. I have a feeling I'm gonna to need to make a whole lot more. In fact, I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna add some cream cheese to this because I need the consistency um, to be nice and, and creamy, but I also don't want anyone to be put off by just the goat cheese. So the cream cheese will kind of chill it out and make it nice and, and uh, easier on the palate. Okay, I had to stop just so I could show you these beauties. Aren't they great? They are so neat. Nice, beautiful brown. I'm happy. Okay, so these have to cool completely. Even the pan, when the pan is easy for me to touch and spin on my head and, and do everything, then, I'm, then I know that these are really good. So in the meantime, back to the fillings. 
One of the great things about being able to be flexible and not being so caught up into the, oh, I don't have this, is that you get, you get, a, you still get a great result. No one who's eating didn't know that you didn't have the ingredient. I'm at a, I'm at a cream cheese. <laughs> I can't remember the last time that's happened. Butter, cream cheese, there are some things that are staples that are an abundance in this home. We went through a huge cream cheese phase. So I got sour cream. It's and that's okay. The goat cheese, it's it's a strong flavor if you don't like it. So this is gonna really mellow it out. And you're gonna get a lot of the tomato and a lot of the basil, which is really what I want anyways. That little goat cheese in the back just reminds you that it's an extra added flavor. Yeah, and just put a, a generous dollop and it'll make it creamier so that when it gets injected into these delicious little puffs, they'll sit nicely. That's good. Oh my gosh, I can smell that tomato. I can smell that basil. All right, let's just make sure that the combination is on point. <laughs> oh yeah, baby, this is ready to go. Okay, so I have my pastry bag, but I'm not going to put a tip in it. I'm going to fill it, and I'll tell you the cool thing about this. Um, when I have it full, before I even cut it, it's its own airtight container. So I can keep it like this until I'm ready to use it. Um, so if I made this like a day or two ahead of time, I'll just top off with a, a rubber band to keep it nice and sealed. Bring it to room temperature and just squeeze the heck out of it until it's it's creamy like this again. But I'm gonna get everything in there. This batch, um, it made the batch of, of savory cream puffs, it made quite a bit. So I might have enough to make a different savory filling. So this will go set aside. Like I said, if I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for a day or so, um, I'll clip it, clamp it, or put it in a rubber band just to keep it safe. That's ready to go. When it's time to use the next day, I'm just going to mush it until it's just like this. These are the savory. Oh man, that smell is so good. Um, <laughs> it's going to sound like a stupid comment, but... Um, the smaller they are, the smaller they'll be. <laughs> I made these really small, so they're going to end up really small, very unlike its grown-up sister, okay? But I want these to be bite-sized. I want these appetizer size, so they're good to go. And now it's, they just have to cool off. Okay, so I wanted you to hear. I want you to hear when they're done. Yay! Good, 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 good. And it's completely cool to the touch. So when it comes to slicing them, now even these are smaller than the cream puffs, but uh, if you know me, you know I prefer smaller and then that way I can have more. <laughs> Otherwise, if I have just one great big cream puff, I'm kind of stuck with just that. Um, so you decide where you want to cut it. Right here is a good spot um, to fill it and then have this little top. But I think I'm gonna cut it right there because I really want to show off the top of it as well. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Nice big air pockets. So in the meantime, in the video below, there is a link on how I made uh, sweet whipped cream. It's as easy as, as heck. So that's a good 
peak. You don't want it too firm, but you definitely want some form on it. And, and you stopped, um, I stopped to taste the sweetness of the cream before it got too whipped and the sugar wouldn't dissolve. Oh, that's so light. That is so light and fluffy. I love it. All right, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I just kind of want to show you how to fill these beauties. Now, this is where filling it can, can be so much fun. You can do so many different things. So, gosh, this reminds me of my working in the bakery where we had to make tons of these and the entire table would be full of these and we'd go, we'd go up and down each one. These are a lot more delicate, a lot more delicate because they're fresh. Oh my goodness, they feel so good in my hand. Okay, so just, and yes, I am being careful right to the end. And that's just so you know that they're matched, okay? Let me fix this for you. Now, if you were going to do like a Valentine's Day, um, I would do a squirt, and then maybe put a strawberry in there and cover it with the rest of it, or just kind of lay it on top and hide it with this. But you want a lot of whipped cream. You want this to be a showcase. I'm gonna get more. You want them full. You want them really big. That's that's the fun of the the that's the fun of the cream puffs. <laughs> it's the cream. And every time you're using a pastry bag and you're refilling, you're gonna get a pocket of air. That's a, it's gonna fart. <laughs> it's gonna fart on whatever you're doing. So either push it up and out or wait for it to fart. Okay. I'm telling you, let's just really pile these things up. All right, so then they go on top very gently. You could do a chocolate whipped cream and then dip these in chocolate before you, you top them. Okay, not quite done. Okay, as with everything, it's the details that finish, that finish it up. So I'm going to just take a spoon of powdered sugar over a sifter. And really generously coat these babies. I don't keep cherries um, in my kitchen. That's not a thing I like. But for this, a dollop of whipped cream and a cherry that's been dried in a paper towel so it doesn't leak makes it beautiful. Fantastic, right? And they're so delicate because they're fresh that you can't really lift them up. You can, but I mean, I had to transfer them with this. But want some? All right, so these are the cream puffs. Let me show you the eclair. Same process. These are so delicate. <laughs> Now, usually eclairs are big, long things, and depending on some of the places you go, they're just ridiculous. I, I that's not my life. <laughs> Again, like I said, I like smaller uh, appetizer-sized portions so that I can eat a variety of different things. 
but look at how beautiful and and open and big boats nice big boats now options you could take this and fill it with um like a stew <laughs> you can do this with these things they're not just for cream puffs you can put little individual stews in there or uh, anything anything hot um, and then put your gravy in and put it on top and you're good to go again you can put some diced apples with like an apple filling put that in there peaches and you, you guys you got this right just go with that we're gonna fill it with that amazing thicker um, vanilla cream okay so I had that other uh, pastry tip that I was going to whip on it but these are so small I'm not going to use that it'll be too big so I'm just going to use a smaller star tip still a star tip because I want the grooves and then this is that delicious pastry cream well the vanilla cream and it's nice and thick so it's going to really hold the weight of this with the fudge on top. Yes, we're gonna put fudge on top. You could you could do it with custard. A lot of a lot of bakeries, of course, they're gonna just use custard because it's a lot easier. But this is just so good. Now, what you're gonna do is remember how I showed you always hold your bag, twist it off the top, and then hold whatever your hand will fit. That's all you have to concentrate on. This is just uh, reserve for when this comes out. So you're going to start here and you're just going to make circles upon circles as you go back, okay? Oh my gosh, these are so small. I'm going to hold it. Okay? This is cold. And again, you want this to be nice and full as well. If you wanted to, I mean, you don't have to. You could just do zigzag if you want. It doesn't really matter because only the sides are going to show. So you do what you want to do. Just keep them matched. One more. And this cream, man, this cream is so delicious. All right, so remember, there's there's a fart right there. You can feel it. <laughs> so push it up the top, but it still might come out. Just beware. So when you feel it, see that? When it comes out, just start going slow because you know it just needs to get out. It doesn't have to be a mess. There you go. Now it feels better, just like a baby. All right, from here, we're gonna take some melted chocolate of your choice, whatever you like. And I just melted mine in a paper, uh, paper plate. I don't usually, <laughs> but today I'm gonna. I'm going to hold it. It's pretty good. It's pretty pliable. I'm going to dip it and I'm going to put it right on top. Okay. Don't smush it down. You don't want to smush it because you don't want to break up the beautiful design that you just worked so hard on. And match it to where it was. I love the portion because you can even here I'll probably eat like maybe a half of this or a quarter of this that way I can have some cream puff there's a method to my madness and just get in all the grooves make sure it's nicely coated And there you have cream puffs.
let that dry before you really do anything else to it. Okay, so these are nice and cool to the touch also. And you're just gonna poke, poke a hole, actually, let me, let me do that with, let me do that with the back of this, just because it got a good crunch in it. Oh, this opened up nicely. Yeah, let me go ahead and poke the holes because I don't want I don't want the top to break. If the bottom breaks, I don't care. But the top I want pretty. And you don't need to really do a lot. You just need enough for the for the pastry bag to go in. So even if it's a, a hole, oh man, that's so aromatic. Okay, you get the idea. So that goes in. Fill it. You can feel the you can feel the weight of it. You can feel the weight change. Oh, that's delicious. Then what you do with these? I mean, you could you could do a lot of things, believe it or not, with this. Um, just pile them onto a plate, drizzle it with flavored olive oil. Those chunks are fantastic. Those are the best part, I think. All right, I need more. Okay, so to finish it up, I'm just going to take some of the oil that's in the Uh, sun-dried tomatoes, some good quality olive oil, and it doesn't matter. I mean, you choose what, this, this you're on your own. You make your own concoction to what you like, and then some of that basil paste. You can either dip it into this or spread this over the tower of pettishu. But the 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 um, savory man, that's just an amazing appetizer. So it does it does come together nicely, nice and thick. Perfect. So look at this. Look at that. Mm, just, you know, dab it on. <laughs> it smells amazing. So I'm going to dip it into this deliciousness. Mm. Oh yeah. I didn't want to talk because all those flavors <laughs> we're still just having a grand old time in there. Oh my god. It's like a little caprese donut. <laughs> they fill so nicely. They feel so big. Look at the chunks of tomato in there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <sighs> One recipe gives you differences. And the, the sour cream instead of the cream cheese turned out to be a great, a great blessing. Because it's really creamy. And it toned down the goat cheese. You still taste it, which is one of my favorite things. But for those who aren't quite as brazen in their palate, 
they're gonna like this because the the coming <laughs> the combination is so good and this little stuff clearly I'm gonna have to start making this by the batch <laughs> this is so good this would be so good on sandwiches or in my mouth with this <laughs> That's it. I got some eating to do. Um, they're done waiting for my family to come home and, and enjoy. And if they don't, then there's neighbors. That's a good thing about baking. It's just you share. Except for these. <laughs> these I'm going to hoard. There's a ton. There's plenty, but I'm happy. These are the kind of snacks I love. Okay, you guys, that's it. Um, take everything step by step, and it's not it's not that big of a deal. So... Until next time, happy baking. <sighs> ah, that was fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe.